Welcome to WatchGuard Security Byte. I'm Corey Knockreiner. Today's story is vendors assaulting security researchers. So I'll start this story by saying today's story really has no practical takeaways other than maybe for vendors out there. So if you're only here to learn about tips to secure your network and not just infosec drama, this may not be the video for you. That said, I kind of really feel passionately about this particular story, which I think is horrible of this particular vendor. So I just had to share uh, the story and what I feel about it on a daily security bite. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Basically, the story comes from a lesser known security blog or news site called SecJuice. And the author there writes a story about a couple of British researchers that found a vulnerability in kiosk systems used in many casinos. There's a particular vendor called Atriant who makes kind of player reward kiosks. If you've ever been to a Vegas casino, Casino, you know now you can get kind of like player membership cards and the more you gamble the more hotel and restaurant rewards you might get and of course these have big systems and back ends to track player data and stuff like that. In any case, Atrient makes a kind of kiosks that users use to set up these player reward cards and that includes giving a lot of your sensitive information to this company. Things like a picture of your driver's license, your address, your email address, all kinds of personally identifiable information. In fact, as you'll hear later, this company plans on also doing facial scanning so that they can do facial ID on their players as well. Anyways, a couple of security researchers from the UK were using Shodan, the kind of Google of internet security vulnerabilities, to look for new vulnerabilities and products out there. And they found Atrian's web-based uh, sites. Basically, their web API was exposed publicly. And without going into all the technical details, which you can see in the SecJuice post, which I will link to in our blog post associated with this video, without going into all those technical details, Essentially, they found that they could get full access to tons of player information through this web API. Atrient was not using any security. Everything they sent in clear text, they didn't bother to try to encrypt things, it was easy to get pictures of driver's licenses, the API was wide open to anyone that wanted to pretend to be one of these kiosks. It really is just the most insecure setup you can think of, which is already a bad start for a, a vendor that controls some pretty uh, sensitive personal information. But that said, security researchers run into IoT devices and vendors that have these sorts of vulnerabilities all the time. And these two UK researchers were responsible security researchers, so they did try to contact and disclose these vulnerabilities to the company Atriant. They sent them repeated emails. When they didn't get replies, this company had a public open FTP server that they even posted a text file to hoping an administrator would respond. Long story short, no one ever replied. And that's when the SecJuice author kind of got involved, and he knows that the FBI likes to know about companies that aren't actually responding to researchers. Long story short, Via SecJuice and the FBI, they set up a meeting with this vendor and the security researchers, which the security researchers were happy about. Because in the end, the company acted like they would fix it all, they acted like they would respond to these researchers. They even offered to pay the researchers 60,000 US dollars uh, with the caveat that they signed an NDA and not share information about this. Now normally, this should be the end of the story. A vendor who really did the wrong thing and had to be pressured into talking to security researchers, at least they seemed to finally come to a consensus and the researchers hoped they would go fix those vulnerabilities. But after that FBI call, they pretty much never contacted the researchers again. The researchers kept on trying to call out to this company, asking about the bounty, asking what the next steps were, and checking up on the company to see if it fixed any of the vulnerabilities, which it did not do. So, already we have a vendor who is doing very bad security practices. If I were a casino owner, I would never use Atriant software because they obviously don't care about their customers. But this 
is where it gets even worse. Uh, well, these two researchers learned that uh, this company was going to attend a trade show in the UK, which is where the researchers were from. So they registered as normal people going to the trade show and went up to speak to kind of the COO and the CEO of this company. And the COO is someone they spoke to before with the FBI. Anyways, when he got in front of the CEO and the CEO figured out who this researcher was, the CEO physically grabbed this researcher, according to reports, and even ripped off the guy's lanyard and refused to give it back at first until the researcher put him on video. This is not how vendors should deal with security researchers. I think it's a very horrible practice, and this is obviously a horrible company that doesn't care about doing the right thing, in my personal opinion. So anyways, I just wanted to point out this story. In this day and age, security researchers and vendors, who by the way, I work for a vendor, WatchGuard Technologies, so I do understand both sides of this story. Really, security researchers and vendors should be working together. Security researchers who go out of their way to find vulnerabilities in your product, but then report them to you without disclosing them to the world, they're doing you a great service. You know, some of them do this even if you don't have a bug bounty program. They realize they may not get any reward in return other than you may be thanking them for their findings, and yet they're helping fix your product. If you're a vendor out there, you should be encouraging researchers to do this. You should immediately communicate them and have a transparent, open conversation with them about any vulnerabilities in your product. You should not be ignoring them. You should not be assaulting them at trade shows, especially when you are the company that is leaking all your customers' information in clear text in the public internet. Anyways, I just had to talk about the story and get it off my chest. If I have any recommendations for vendors out there, it is to work with security researchers. Most of these white hat researchers are really good people that are trying to do you a service. Yes, occasionally there might be conflict. Yes, sometimes they try to get money out of you, which by the way is if a company doesn't have a bug bounty program, researchers shouldn't automatically expect that a company will be able to pay them, even though I do think their work is worth money and reward. Anyways, vendors, try to work with security researchers. They're great people. We've all seen what happened to companies that ignore these flaws. In the end, they had to change or they would go out of business. So just wanted to point out this interesting InfoSec drama. I'd like to see where this goes. I really personally believe that this company pays some sort of consequence for their misbehavior. At the very least, they should have quickly moved to secure their customers' data. Again, if I were in the casino business looking for player reward systems, this is one I would run away from as fast as I can, especially now that they're trying to add facial recognition to their kiosks as well. Anyways, fascinating if yet sad story. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching.